Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Sunday. My name is Reverend Mike Schoonover and I'm the minister here at Unity Way Church in Vista, California. We are a metaphysical church, which basically means that we live and we teach the power of our own consciousness because it's through our consciousness that we experience all of our experiences. And when we have remembered that we're divine, we know who we are and why we've incarnated onto this third dimensional plane. So I invite you to have an open heart and an open mind and an open soul. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer and it's from Daily Word. This is July the 25th, 1929. To be youthful and renewed, we must let new ideas fill our minds. Just invite you to breathe in that divine idea. Youthful and renewed ideas. We are self rejuvenating. We have the, the power within us to regenerate our mind, our body, and our soul when we have remembered our divinity. So as you release that breath, and I invite you again to take in a deep cleansing breath of renewed life energy within your body temple. Let it saturate your solar plexus, and it goes through the electrical grid of your body, and it goes out into your field of attraction, your aura. It changes your life because you've remembered who you are. We are a metaphysical church, which means we affirm there's only one power and one presence. God, the good, the omnipotent. One life, one substance. One idea of youthfulness. We are youthful because we live in the eternal now moment. And if you believe that high truth understanding with me, I invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now here is Mickey with The Daily Word. Good morning. The word for today is trust. The affirmation is I place my trust in God. Few things are a greater comfort than deep and abiding trust in God. When I trust, I move more confidently through life. I feel the wind at my back and am made strong in the face of adversity. In the past, I may have felt disappointed when I misplaced my trust. The things of the world are impertinent. Even people come and go. The truth of God is the one presence and power in the universe, and as my life is everlasting, unchanged and unchanging through all the seasons of life. Even as I grow, evolve, and deepen in spiritual understanding, God is always my source, the inspiration I return to again and again. My freedom to seek and discover lies in the awareness that I can always trust in God. And from Isaiah 26, 4, trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. And again, the affirmation is, I place my trust in God. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. We place our trust in God. What a divine idea. What do we trust in our life? Do we trust the world around us of appearances, of forms and shapes? Or do we trust the substance which is making up the forms and the shapes? We'll be talking a little bit about that as we talk about prayer this morning. Charles Fillmore and Myrtle Fillmore had a divine idea. And they had this idea that they would create a space where someone would be, someone would be sitting in the silence 24-7. Charles Fillmore called it a spiritual earth or a spiritual ether battery. So right now back at Unity Village in Missouri, in the Silent Unity Chapel, there's a soul sitting in front of all those prayer claims. Well, I want to bless that individual that's holding that high sacred watch. I will also want to bless those prayer claims. We believe in answered prayer. And this morning, I'd like to tap into some of that divine energy, some of that divine etheric battery energy that's healing and prospering. That's the energy of the God presence. And I'd like to bring it forth where we are by the power of truth. And as it saturates the sanctuary and it goes forth to wherever you may be, may you breathe in the presence of God, realizing that you're never alone. You have never been alone and that you truly are the light of the world. And if you believe this truth, I encourage you to use the affirmation we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. 
Amen. Well, I have an interesting comic for you this morning. I'm sure you will enjoy it. And it's a sign uh, outside of a highway, kind of off like where a diner would be. And it says, just sold my homing pigeon on eBay. <laughs> Enterprising young man. For the 22nd time. Yeah, you get it? Homing pigeon, he keeps selling it because it keeps going back to him. The people are buying it. It's not going to them. Hey, 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 keep the strawberries in the baskets, please. From my minister's joke page, this is a daughter talking to her mother. This is the daughter. Mom, what, what's it like to have the greatest daughter in the entire world? The mother responds, dear, I don't know, sweetheart. You'd have to call your grandmother. <laughs> He's not talking about her. She's talking about herself. Laugh, laugh. It's good for the soul. Good for the soul. Come on, guys. Giggle, giggle. One more from my minister's joke page. And this is a, a woman, and she's talking. These two women, they're talking about uh, their son. And the first woman says, I have the perfect son. The second woman says, does he smoke? The first woman says, no, he doesn't. The, first, uh, the, second, woman, the, the second woman says, uh, does he drink any beer? Uh, the, uh, the second or the first woman said, no, no, he doesn't. And then she asked uh, the first woman, does he ever come home late? No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't, she said. Wow, I guess you really do have the perfect son. How old is he? Because I have a daughter. Uh, he will be six months old next Wednesday. Ha <laughs> ha, you didn't see that one either, did you? He's only six months old. How could he have any problems or give any problems? You, I don't write these jokes. Let me tell you, they're from a minister's joke page, so it's all true. Let's breathe in and have a smile on her face. Because joy is the sign of the presence of God within each and every one of us. This morning, I'm going to be speaking about how we can strengthen our own prayer life. And I have five steps that we can use that we can integrate into our understanding this day, this Sunday. And how we can allow our prayers to be more effective, especially coming from a metaphysical lens or perspective. I'd like to open up with a... Uh, Verse, and this is from John. This is Jesus speaking. It's John uh, 15, verse 5. And of course, it's from the New Testament. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Invite you just to breathe into the truth because that's kind of the template from which I'm basing this talk. He is the vine and we're the branches. Notice that it's something that's living. It's something that's truly living. The life force is bubbling through it, giving it life. We're always connected. And notice Jesus said it's the I am. It's the I am vine that we want to awaken and we want to tap into whenever we're, we're engaged in any type of prayer work. I'd like to open with an unknown uh, statement. This is from an unknown person, but it's very powerful. Metaphysics is concerned with the truth about being. In metaphysics, you hear a lot about being. It's who we are. It's not what we're going to become. It's who we are. It's uncovering the divinity within each and every one of us. And that's what metaphysics really teaches. It's self-reflection. It's self-understanding. It's really understanding that the life force is within us. And when we uncover that divinity and allow that force in the energy of life to flow through our body temple out into our aura, our life changes, radically shifts. Uh, the term metaphysics really goes back to Aristotle, and Aristotle defined um, being as being the true, as the one of the per se senses of being. And ultimately, metaphysics reaches toward that truth, the truth of the first cause. Where's the first cause? It's within our consciousness. We are the first cause. Life is not happening to us. Consciously, it's, it's happening, but it's happening from us. It's from our consciousness, what we believe, what we think, what we feel, what we habitually put our faith in, our strength in. It's going to show up in our life circumstances. 
many mystic traditions, uh, Gnosticism, the Kabbalah, Suf uh, Sufism, they always stress this inside aspect to what we sometimes the philosophers call this mental container. Another way of talking about the temple body is that it's a mental container, meaning that our body is a reflection of our consciousness that's out picturing this body. And that's pure metaphysics. And it's always going back to that one source, the center, the unity, one presence, one power within us. And what we discover is our self-identity, our self-divinity. That's what sets us free. Uh, also, in metaphysics, one of the things we teach is the thoughts and the feelings and the images. And when we are on a meta metaphysical journey, we want to speak accurately. We want to speak accurately because the more we speak and th uh, feel and think, it's going to show up on our environments. So our thoughts, in truth, disentangle themselves when they pass through the mental lips of our own fingertips. I invite you this morning to realize that your words whether spoken or unspoken, are very powerful. They're like fingertips. And they touch the invisible realm. And they bring to us or push away from us according to their nature, the nature of the thoughts. That's why what we think and what we feel and what we image and what we habitually do over and over, it affects how we show up in our life. This is uh, from the New Testament. This is the Gospel of Matthew. This is uh, chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. May you hear these words of the I am speaking. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's the I am within us. When we are in total attunement, life is easy. We move through our life situations, whether positive or negative. We never forget who we are. And when we're in that I am consciousness, that's where we want to be when we pray. Because that's how we truly can show up as the Christ of our own life. Prayer is a very critical part of our truth walk. Through prayer and meditation, we draw from God's invisible wisdom and resources. Are you receptive to the truth? Is there any room in your mental container for truth? Or is your mental container so plugged up there's, there's no room? You see, we have to create space, create room. Again, we use what we use today, and tomorrow maybe we have to let certain things go. But we want to keep room so this truth can have a place to come into us. So we're reaffirming the steps that we want to walk in of our own divinity. What happens is we unfold, we grow in God's joy, and this really becomes our aura in the energy field that surrounds us. We have an energy grid around us. Actually, every object has an energy grid around it. And if we were somewhat more clairvoyant, we could pick up that energy field because it's there. Everything's emitting some type of energy. The key is we want to be in a positive field of energy all the time. And this is from a early writer of Unity, and this is from her book, um, Prayer Changes Things. She was a newspaper writer, and she came to the village uh, in the late 30s and early 40s and studied personally with Charles Fillmore. Her name is Dana Gatlin, and she shares this insight. When we get into our automobile and step on the accelerator, we take it for granted that we will travel faster. And you say, oh, that's the, what, what, what's, the, what's the news about that statement? When we pray and we unleash the God energy within us of our own soul, we're going to move forward whether we like it or not. And when we're in alignment, we're in tune, it's going to speed us to the direction of our answered prayer. So the first step I'd like to share with you this morning is an idea, and it's abide in Christ the vine. There is a vine within us. It's the living vine of truth. And even if we're asleep to it, it's still there. But as we begin our journey and we awaken from the slumbering state of this third dimensional world in which we live, which there's nothing wrong with the third dimensional world, as long as we realize it's not causative, we realize that we are projecting the world on our thoughts, our images. We are projecting it. It's not reversed. The earth is not pro projecting it on us. That's an ego uh, edemic way of thinking. And when we awaken to this, we can understand what real prayer is. The Hebrew word for prayer is, it's P-E-L-E-L, -E -L, and it's a reflexive word. 
And what it does is an act of self-analysis or self-evaluation. And I love that I- definition about prayer. It's a self-evaluation. Prayer is for us. Prayer is to put us in attunement. We don't fix other people. We're not, ha- we're not here to trying to change circumstances. We're trying to think differently within our own consciousness. And as we change our thoughts and our feelings, it will manifest in our lives, which is so important. So prayer is not a matter of bargaining with God. Prayer is not a matter of begging with God. It's not bribery. It, prayer, that's not really, that's a third dimensional ego way of thinking of prayer. And of course, when you're at that level, that's kind of the effects that you're going to receive. But when we remember we're God's children, we're the image and likeness, we come from a place of deep authority. This is from our co-founder, Charles Fillmore. Prayer, it steps up mental action until man's consciousness synchronizes with the Christ mind. How many times in your life have you truly felt that you were synchronized with the Christ mind within you? How many times? I would invite you that we should be feeling that more than just once in a lifetime. That's more than one aha moment. I believe as we're on this journey, we will feel even more in sync with this divine mind that we tap into. And in that divine mind, there are no mistakes. It's right where we're supposed to be right here and right now, which means that we live in a state of continual truth. See, if you live in a state of continual truth, that's going to show up how you meditate. We abide in God, and God is a vibrational frequency. And when we remember this truth and we pray with this understanding, it resets our hearts. What are the patterns in your subconscious mind that you need to release? What are the things that we can say, let go and let God? That phrase, let go and let God, is actually a prayer in many ways. It's a denial and an affirmation. And if you really mean let go and let God, it puts you back into sequence. It puts you back into the oneness that you're resting with the one power, one presence. You are living in the law side of cause, not effects. I will say that from an endemic state of consciousness, we live in ignorance. But to the omnipresent God knowledge within us, That means we remember we're divine. We apply it to our daily lives. We can know a lot of truth. We can have read a lot, a lot of books, went to a lot of seminars. We can know everything that Wayne Dyer said. We can know everything about all these great teachers have said. But let's take a pause. If it's not incorporated into our daily life, that means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If it's not something that we use on a continual basis, It's really not helping us to really step up our prayer activity, step up to accelerate ourselves to have and achieve the manifestations that we want in our spiritual life. And again, this is from Charles Fillmore. Prayer is the language of spirituality. When developed, it makes man master in the realm of creative ideas. Who's your master? Many of us have had a master called the ego, and that's the edemic master that we don't want. We want the Christ understanding of a master. We're supposed to be the masters of our own lives, not of somebody else's life. Our own life, our own consciousness, our own body temple. And that's what prayer can help us remember and live according to that truth. So the second step I'd like to share with you about more effectual prayer is we need to pray in faith. Faith is not really, oh, I hope it's going to happen. Again, hope in a metaphysical way is really an assurance it's going to happen. So where do you put your faith? Do you put it in Wall Street, in the pharmaceuticals, in the newspaper, in the cable news channels? Where do you put your faith? I mean, honestly, and I, and I mean that for all of us to maybe take a pause and step back. Where are we putting our faith? We should be putting our faith in the divinity within us because that's where the God substance is activated. And when we activate that divine substance, we tap that spiritual etheric battery like I was speaking about with silent unity and it propels us. It accelerates us in the direction of answered prayers. From James, this is the book of James chapter one, verse six. I'd like to share this idea with you. When you ask, you must believe and not doubt. 
I think many times in our life we've prayed for certain things that we thought were what we wanted, but there's still doubt. In metaphysics, we need to conquer doubt because doubt really is a brother or sister of fear. And fear is really, really, its parent is believing in duality, believing in even exchange, believing in mixtures. In prayer, we don't believe in mixtures. We affirm that when we speak the name I am that I am, we are in true beingness. And what we speak and what we affirm and what we live from will manifest in our life. That's not just a promise. We believe it's metaphysical law. We stand in God. We stand in God faith. Think about it. God is expressing as you and I. That means we stand step by step in God faith. And if your God has some kind of question marks attached to him or her, maybe you need to think about that a little bit more. Because the God presence that we talk about is a one presence and one power. It knows no fear. It is absolute light. And when we tap into this energy, we get wonderful results. We can say, Alleluia! We can say, Alleluia! Because we have remembered that we are the God presence. We deserve answered prayers. Circumstances change then, and we are healed and delivered from our old edemic air thinking patterns. And the reason I keep bringing that up is because the world lives in the edemic mind. And again, it's not that I'm not judging it as bad, but when you live in that type of world, you're fragmented. You live in a wounded consciousness. And a wounded consciousness is going to attract more wounded experiences in your life. Here's the deal metaphysically. We talk about the law of attraction, which fits into our prayer model. The law of attraction is controlled by the law of attention. Where you put your focus, what you're focusing on, what you focalize with, what you're looking at is going to show up in your life. And that's what feeds the law of attraction. So where's our attention? We need to believe in answered prayers. Again, we need to believe in the one light, the light of truth. I'd like to share a story with you that kind of demonstrates this thought. And this is about knowing yourself. One day, a older carpenter was at church building, uh, building uh, crates. And uh, he was building these crates because they were putting a whole bunch of sh uh, items that were going to go to an orphanage over in China. So he was sealing up these wooden crates. They were going to go over in a tanker. After completing his work, he headed back home. He reached, uh, when he got home, he reached into his pocket for his reading glasses, but he realized they were gone. Where did he leave them? Oh my gosh. Realizing his glasses, he's thinking about this, must have slipped out of his shirt pocket and had fallen into one of the crates that he uh, already sealed. And he already nailed it shut. They're on their way to China by now. Uh, the old man's new glasses, these were new glasses that he bought. They were headed to China. He spent over $80 for these new glasses. He was not very happy. He's very, very frustrated. The older man was so frustrated that he started to whine. Uh, it's not fair, God. You ever had that kind of thought go through your mind? It's not fair. God, I'm giving up my time. I'm helping to fill these crates up so they can go over to China to help the people that were sending these kids to the orphanage. I mean, I'm putting my money into this. How could how, I lost my glasses? You can see he's really in a pickle. And we're going to come back to that story. This is from the great Yogananda, who was a great Hindu master that lived and actually has a self-realization center, not only in L.A., but also in Encinitas still. And he says to us this morning, by the practice of meditation, you could say prayer, you will find that you are carrying within your heart a portable paradise. When's the last time you thought a prayer is tapping into a portable paradise? paradise but it actually is because when we know the i am that i am presence we tap into a paradise and we create our life we can create our life over and we can create it over and we can create it over that's the joy of metaphysics and that's when we understand really prayer and meditation the paradise is within us we don't travel someplace to find it we don't need a treasure map we have it within us if we're willing to use it. 
The third step uh, about prayer and having more effectual prayer I'd like to share with you this morning is uh, persevere in prayer. Perseverance is very important when we pray. Because many times in metaphysics, we're always praying and it's not appeared. Remember, Jesus said, pray believing you've already received. So it might be in the invisible, but it hasn't physically manifested yet, which means we need to be per persistent. We need to be vigilant in our prayer practice and not doubt. We need to have open hearts. We need to become more receptive. How receptive are you? I will say that if you're not open and receptive, then really prayer is really not what you need to do. You need to put yourself in a, uh, a state of being open and receptive to the answers to your prayers. We become sensitive to spirit's movements. When we pray, Charles Filmer used to always say, when you pray in truth, and you're affirming that you are divine, that you are the Christ, that you have found your own inner paradise, as Yogananda would say, you feel a shiver. You feel a shiver go through your body temple. That's when you know you have tapped the etheric battery of divinity within you. And that's when shift happens in our lives. If we don't get that, that, that little shiver, then we know we're not at the frequency. That means we need to reevaluate how we're praying because we deserve that sign. Charles Filmer said it was the sign that we are synced. We're plugged in. And of course, we're always plugged in, but sometimes it's dimmed because we have the dial down or we're focusing on fear or maybe it won't happen or, or maybe God doesn't want it to happen or maybe, forget the or maybe, Know what you want before you go into prayer. I want to overemphasize again and again that we need to continually hear with spiritual ears. We need to read and meditate on spirit's laws and promises. Do you believe in the laws of metaphysics? You should. Somebody came to Emerson one time and said that, you know, I believe the universe has laws. And Emer Emerson said, well, damn right you should, because that, you, that's a given. And I think we need to realize we're dealing with metaphysical laws. And even though you can't taste it or touch it, and you can't lock it in a tube or something, we're dealing with law. And when we're dealing with conscious law, it will appear in our life. But we have to be willing to open our mind and use the Christ mind. Just because we have the Christ mind doesn't mean we're using it. We need steps to open us up again, to be more receptive. Prayer deeply awakens us and it awakens us to a soul inheritance within you. Do you know that in your soul you have an inheritance of paradise? Do you know that in your soul you have a porthole to paradise? You have your own Garden of Eden within you. Charles Fillmore would say, as good metaphysicians, we have never left the Garden of Eden. We've always lived in the garden. But you really live in the garden when you know that you control what you think and feel and what you're judging. See, if you don't control that, you, then you become a victim of the circumstances around you. And then you're sitting there arguing with a snake, whether you're naked or not. Remember in that story, God said, who said you're naked? It's kind of a strange thing to say because I thought God is God. Wouldn't you know they're naked? See, God doesn't see nakedness. He only sees wholeness, completeness total answered prayer. And this is from Dana Gatlin again. Prayer. It is merely to see and to know God. Not God and this or that imperfection, limitation, but God alone. Are you willing this Sunday to have the mantra God alone? God only? God only? Because when we understand God only, that means we're in the one presence and one power. That means we are the creators of the prayer shifting, the shifts that we need in our life to put our life on course, to really live a life that's fulfilled, especially remembering our divine inheritance. We discover God's desires in our hearts, and our desires are never selfish. Our desires are never selfish. Our desires are for wholeness and completeness, and we want to not only see that for ourselves. But once we see it for ourselves, we can share it with humanity. Remember, you can't love, you can't give something you don't know. You can't give something you don't have. You can't give something unless you wake into it within your own heart. Which means that you have to realize every day, God only is the mantra we need to really be in consciousness when we say our prayers.
Our soul is self-confidence. Our soul will grow in self-confidence when we remember that spirit is empowering us with new energies. We become self-activated. See, as the Christ within us, we become self-activated. And you can only become self-activated if you believe the divinity is already within you. See, the world believes that we have an open, we have a hole in our heart. And we go around trying to fill it with this and fill it with that and fill it with this. You can't fill this space with something from the outside. That's only the prayer of oneness. It's only the prayer of God only that opens that space. And you realize it's already filled, but it's a vibrational shift within us. And now back to my story about the man who lost his new glasses. Many months later, the orphanage director visited the United States. He wanted to visit all the churches that supported him when he was over in China. One Sunday, he spoke at the old man's small church in Chicago. Uh, the U.S. director, uh, or the director, uh, began to give thanks to all the people for uh, all the support they gave to his orphanage over there in China. But he said, I have to say something. I must thank you for the glasses you sent me last year. Uh, the communists swept through the orphanage and, and destroyed everything, including my own glasses. Along with not being able to see, I had all these headaches. I had co uh, co-workers, and um, they were all praying for me because without my glasses, I really couldn't function there, and I couldn't get another, re another pair. Then, your crates arrived that day. Uh, when my staff removed the covers on one of them, they found a pair of glasses lying on the top. The director paused long enough to let his words sink in. It's like the glasses had been custom made just for me. Thank you for being the answer to my prayers. And it really tugs at your heart because that's how the universe works sometimes. The congregation was so, uh, uh, so confused as they had no idea where the glasses came from. And no one ever request, requested glasses because they would have put some in on their itemized list that they sent out. In the back, after church, in the back with tears streaming down his face, an ordinary carpenter realized the master carpenter had used him in an extraordinary, extraordinary, prayful way. Those glasses had a mission, and the mission was to go to China. And what it brings to us, I think, in the moment, is even when we see things that are not, we don't call it right, or we're frustrated, there's a blessing within it. Affirm the blessing in it. Affirm the blessing in it. That's how we transform, transform really lives. This is from the Unity Minister, Ernest C. Wilson. Truth cannot be communicated. It must be evolved. It must be experienced. I really can't pray for you. I can pray with you. But I encourage you to pray from your own sense of beingness. I encourage you to pray from your own sense of the vine presence of the I am within you. I encourage you to pray from your own sense that you have a paradise within your soul if you're willing to tap into it. The fourth step I'd like to share with you with prayer is use different prayer types. Don't get stuck into only one model of prayer because then it becomes rote. Even affirmations and denials, they become rote. And after a while, you don't hear them anymore. It's kind of listening to your favorite 45, you used to buy songs on a 45 a single, and you listen to it over and over and over and over, and about this 80th time, you hear the same song over, because you used to put the arm over on the old record player, and it would just keep playing over. It doesn't have the same zing. And that's why we have to keep our prayer fresh. It has to be fresh. And it's not that those prayer techniques that we used at that time didn't work and they weren't effective. But we're always called to come up higher. We're called to grow and expand. We're called to let the energy within that vine of the I am, that energy to flow through us and lead us to the prayer techniques that we need so we can feel that presence of God within us. The indwelling spirit hears and answers our prayers. And you know how I know that? Because it's law. The universe has perfect ears, also has perfect hearing, also has perfect eyesight. Who are you kidding? 
It's us when we're projecting our negativity or projecting some clouded state on our environment. Let's, let's let that go. We are stop fighting with the tinsel. We stop fighting with the film strip. If we don't like the movie that's showing in front of us, let's turn off the projector because we're the one who's creating the film that we're seeing in our life. You turn off the projector, it's gonna stop. And by prayer, we have the ability to do that. Take a deep breath and start again. Outside obstacles. Do you believe in outside obstacles? They melt away uh, by turning into growth steps. And I truly believe that. As we remember who we are, we grow, we evolve. Now, sometimes we don't run. We walk step by step by step by step. Let's walk in the steps of our own divinity. Because then we persevere and we refuse to let go of our own divinity. Our soul's authority unleashes our blessings for us. When you pray, where do you think you're praying to? You're praying to your own soul self. That's where prayer is. That's where consciousness is. That's where it is. It's not some outside behind the Milky Way or behind Saturn. It's within us. That's the, that's, that's the contact point. And prayer is truly the language of spirit that synchronizes us with that inner divinity. This is from a New Thought teacher, and her name is Stella uh, uh, Trell Mann. This is where prayer comes in. Prayer is a conscious desire to listen to God. See, in our old way of praying, usually uh, from our traditional way, is that we're always telling God. In truth, we're listening to God. There's a difference. And I'm not saying you can't share your ideas. I'm not saying you can't share where you authentically are. But real prayer is about priming us in the direction and then listening for the answers that we need to have, that we need to activate and we can use in our everyday life. The fifth step I'd like to share with you is God's love flow. Whenever you pray, you need to be in a state of absolute love, the flow of love. And I'm speaking about an unconditioned love, I'm not talking about a tainted, selfish ego love. I'm talking about a love like water. The water doesn't fight where the hose is pointing it. It loves for the sake of loving. It waters what is what's where it's put. And by prayer, we direct like that host symbolically where we're going to put it. We need to water the good. We need to water the vine of truth, which is within our own souls. So again, the fifth step is God's love flow. Uh, faith. There's many different types of prayers that we can tap into. There's a prayer of faith. There's a prayer of agreement. There's praise and worship. There's consecration. There's service, commitment, and intercession. And of course, we do the intercession within each and every one of us. We don't need somebody speaking for us. We speak for ourselves, from our own inner I am Christ authority. And again, this is from Ernest C. Wilson. Untidy minds are without order. They are like a warehouse where goods are stored without a plan or purpose. Take a deep breath. Let's take a pause. In many of our lives, that's kind of how we are. We're a huge warehouse. Our minds symbolically have all these ideas and feelings and images and all the information we know. It's too much, especially if we have it untidy and we don't know where things are. You know, we need to have order in our universe, which we do. We need to have order in our house, which we do. We need to have order in our minds. And by believing in prayer and using some of these steps, it can help put us back into that synchronicity. In truth items, the truth items, or excuse me, the truth terms, it is using the right tools to get the right results. Each prayer type has a specific emphasis. So sometimes you want a prayer of invocation. I'm now in the presence of pure being. Another time, you, there's a prayer of intercession. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Of course, that's the indwelling Lord. There's another time when we speak affirmatively, I am the vine. I am the Christ truth. See, each one of those will help us along our way because every situation that we travel through is a little bit different. And we have those prayer types that we can use and it keeps it fresh keeps it fresh and new. And this is from the Union Minister J. Sig Paulson. I invite you to hear these words. Love never leaves you where it finds you. Even as it approves of you, 
it improves you. And I really like that. Again, love never leaves you where it finds you. Even as it approves of you, it improves you. See, when you're tapped into divine love, unconditioned love, your prayers are always answered. The universe is always responding to your prayers, even before you maybe even get into that prayer state because you're synced up. You're synced up. You know where you're going to go. Prayer, in a way, is like that accelerator. When you push that pedal down, you better know where you're going to go because otherwise you're going to bang into something. And that's what prayer does. It accelerates us in the direction of answered prayer, which means we need to have some space where we know where we're going. We don't just want to spin around in a circle or something. It's very important. An effective prayer is one that comes from the heart of love. Do you have unconditional love for your family? I'm sure you do. Do you have unconditional love for the people who don't think like you? They don't vote like you? They don't have your same religious philosophy? That maybe have different ideas about government? Uh, about prayer or God or the Middle East? I invite you that they deserve unconditioned love from you too. Because if you're not, then you're really not living in the master consciousness of really Jesus was saying, I am the vine. And that doesn't mean we give up what we believe, but it means we can love and support them even if we don't always think the same thing. That's the power of truth. That's a power of really using this love because this love approves of us and it improves us and improves our life situations. We learn to commune with spirit. Spirit pours a new love energy into our souls. We become expressive. This is kind of many times called agape love. It's a love that we just give. It's something like the water out of the hose. The water doesn't fight where it's being directed. Like with us, when we love and unconditionally, we, can, we have to love the people that necessarily don't think like us. Because if we don't, then we're really no better than the ego mind. We need to come up higher. We don't want to live in duality. We want to live in oneness. We want to find the paradise that Yogananda spoke about. We want to find, like Charles Fillmore say, would say, that, that etheric battery, that charging battery in our soul that gives us the shiver that we know that we are doing the right thing for today. And tomorrow we can change direction because that's what consciousness does. And I would also say that when we live in this state of love, we can cut the cords of negativity or mixtures that no longer serve us. We cut those cords. So this way our energies aren't drained anymore. See, when we ha are living in an, a state of unforgiveness, or we're living like a branch that has a lot of dead wood in it or dead stuff, you prune it. That's how you keep the vine fresh. That's how you keep it growing. And that's what a prayer life can do for each and every one of us. And before I close, I'd like to just go through those steps again. The first step is to abide in Christ, the vine. The second step is pray in faith. The third step, preserve or persevere in prayer. The fourth step is use different prayer types. And the fifth step is God's love flow. And all those really are mingled together. That creates the prayer practice of a real good true student. And I'd like to close with some wisdom from Midrash, which is uh, from the Hebrew, uh, their oral tradition. And it is, only the one who eats the dish knows how it tastes. Taste your prayers this Sunday. May you taste the divinity, the sweetness of the vine. May you taste the paradise in which you deserve to live in. But again, if you don't taste it, you're not really enjoying it. So not only do we create the paradise, not only do we create and enjoy the fruit of the vine, but we taste it and we relish in the divinity within each and every one of us. May this truly be a Sunday that we awaken to a metaphysical understanding of the sweetness so we can taste the divinity within each and every one of us. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, or our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift may be and invite you to imbue it with the I am the vine, the energy of life, the energy of flow. And may that truly vibrate within your hands. And know it goes forth through this ministry to bless each and every one of us. You can go to unityway.com and get our physical address. You can go to unityway.com and also do electronic donation. And we just say thank you, God, 
Thank you, God, and thank you for keeping us in the circulation of truth. And we see you blessed as we are being blessed. If you join with me, please. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now our prayer of protection. May we know that we're protected because we remember the divinity within us. Our protection comes from the I am that I am. If you'd please join me. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. May this be the Sunday that we're not only well, but may we taste the desires of our heart and be grateful. And may we know that this week is going to change because we've changed the way we're stepping into our prayer life. And I'll see you next Sunday. And I just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.